Yeah, right, so, so, I mean, you're a Christian now, aren't you? Yeah. And you were a Muslim. I was born a Muslim. I wouldn't Thank, say I, I didn't. Okay. I didn't you were I, born into a Muslim family. But I, I asked questions which, which didn't really make sense to me when I got the responses yeah. back. And I did yeah. my own research. And at the same time, I had an encounter with Christ. That's what yeah. brought me to Christ. Thanks so, be to God. Yeah. So it's blatantly obvious there's different Arabic versions of the Quran. It's out there. Yes. You still, you still hear people. I still have Muslims coming up to me today saying yeah. that same thing. God bless, God bless you. you. Thank you so Peace much. Peace be with you. God bless you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Sure. Wait, wait. Shamsi. White supremacist, remember? <laughs>I, I would say that proto-Islam was probably that a warlord called Muhammad believed himself to be a prophet like Abraham, of the God of Abraham, and that they, he didn't, and he and he borrowed from stories that he picked up on his travels, and he and he picked up these stories about Jesus, and he picked up these stories about Moses, and he just incorporated them into his sayings, and possibly even later Muslims added. I actually think that the, the proto-Islam, according to the hadiths, and I couldn't find it because I'm too cold and I was talking and listening and trying to find the hadith as well. But the, the, the proto-Islam, their understanding of what was in the Quran was much, much bigger than what Muslims think the Quran looks like today. Much bigger. The Quran that we have today was, is much smaller than what the Muslims at the time of Muhammad thought the Quran was. So why can I ask you a question? Where did the myth of one, one Quran come up from? When there's only one Quran? I've had that from it, it's, I, I mean, the myth of one Quran, I think... Because that's, I, that's been, I was born, I, was, I think I met you before, but at Daniel's uh, yeah. evangelism training. Yeah. Yeah. That, Prophet Muhammad, no, no. he copied the Uncle, from, from Uncle, the Torah Uncle, and Bible. Uncle, come here, and the, come here. And, uh, and Quran Uncle. says, Quran minute, says, Quran says, if you want knowledge, get it from people of scripture before yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. And Jews and Christians, they married three-year-old, and Muslim <laughs> married six-year-old girl. And because Muslim copied uh, Romans and Greek, and the uh, and the Bible says, kill them. Thank you. And, Uncle. and Torah said, kill those who, who you, are Uncle. three year old, Uncle. and kill uh, women Uncle. who are married. Uncle. Keep the virgin. Uncle. And some Muslims Uncle. copied from Torah and Bible. Uncle. Thank you so much. And don't blame Thank the you. Muslims. Okay. They only Thank copied you, okay. from Thank Torah, you. And, Thank Torah you. and Bible. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, um, yeah, so, so, I mean, you're a Christian now, aren't you? Yeah. And you were a Muslim. I was born a Muslim. I wouldn't say I didn't. Okay. I didn't you were I, born into a Muslim family. But I, I asked questions which, which didn't really make sense to me when I got the responses yeah. back. And I did yeah. my own research. And at the same time, I had an encounter with Christ. That's what yeah. brought me to Christ. Thanks so, be to God. Yeah. So, so, you know, I mean, and this is the point, Muslims. There are Muslims becoming Christians every day. You can be one of them. You don't have to stick with Islam. It clearly doesn't make sense. I would say, personally, I think the idea of a, a singular Quran mm -hmm. is an invention of Muslim da'i, so Muslim missionaries. Yeah. They use this as a selling point to try and contrast Islam to Christianity. And so they created the myth of a single Quran in the last hundred years that when you actually look at, at classical Islam, yeah. They didn't have an understanding of a single Quran. Yeah. They had an understanding of versions of the Quran, multiple versions of the Quran. I don't get it though, because look, it's so it's blatantly obvious. There's different Arabic versions of the Quran. It's out there. Yes. You still, you still hear people. I still have Muslims coming up to me today saying yeah. that same thing. Because they're, 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 they're it's, tied it's, to their selling point. But it's, but it's evident there. Yeah. It's black and white. Yeah, of it's, course it is. But I'm like, oh. And you know, the thing is, all you have to do is think about what does the word version mean? What does the word version mean? It means something that is different to something else, but largely the same. Yeah. That's what a version is. It's the same, but with a difference, yeah. a variant. And what we see when we study it is that there are m different versions of the Quran. The Hafs, the Wash and the Duri, apparently one plus one plus one equals one for the Muslim. <laughs> Can I ask you a question as well, Bob? That book that you gave that gentleman. Yeah. Um, what's that book called? It's called the the Forgotten Forgotten Father. What's it about? Well, the thing is, bro. Like, right, what what I do is I ask people to donate books to me. Yeah. Good books, good books that they would want other Christians to read. Yep. And then I just give them out. I don't have time to read them all. You just give. Them. So I think that basically what what we it, it's it's a book that looks at the theology surrounding the Father in the New Testament. What you? 
I get. I'll tell you something because I was telling my partner, you met my, you know my partner. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was telling him I was, was going to come here today. I was, kid you not, just walking through there. Yeah. I was like, why did I even come? But sitting here now and here, just having a conversation with you, even the way you just spoke to that gentleman that was here, I feel like I got this this trip coming here was worth it. Thanks, so Mr. I'll, be, I'll definitely be coming back again. Just here. Okay, bro. I, thank you so much, bro. We need Christian cameramen to come down here in the park to film Christian speakers. Right. If you're a Christian who, who's, who's sound emotionally, you can keep down a good job, you've got a family, you know, you're not needy, you're trained in apologetics, you can stand up for yourself physically, mentally and spiritually, come down here, do evangelism down here. If you're a Christian and you've got a camera and you know how to do editing work, or even if you could just point it, come down here, film the Christians. But if you're a, a Christian who, you know, can recognize your insecurities, stay away from this park. It's not a healthy place for you to be. It's not a safe place for you to be. There's not enough Christians to give you the fellowship that you're looking for. And if you're a Christian who's coming down here and you don't know apologetics, stay out of debate because you're not equipped. Mm, definitely. I'm not saying either of that is you, <laughs> no. but like, you know, I, I know if you're we, we, in Daniel's network, he encourages you to... You know, he encourages you to do evangelism. 100%. So, you know. But at the same time, apologetics, yeah. the questions that you ask, the way you're able to respond, I see a lot of us need to be equipped by it. Definitely. Yeah. And I, I believe, as you know, as it says in the word of God, iron sharpens iron. Being Amen. Around, being around that definitely sharpens me. Being around Daniel sharpens me as well. Yeah. But I want a bit of everything. Yeah. I feel whatever God's feeling, whatever I feel God telling me to do, what he's laying on my heart, I follow that. Well, you come hang out with us, bro. Definitely, man. Come and hang yes, out with God us. Bless God bless you. you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, man. Yeah. Sure. Wait, wait. Yeah. Shamsi, white supremacist, remember? <laughs> <laughs> What's that joke? Sham Shamsi was calling me a white supremacist last week. <laughs> yeah. Who's Shamsi? Sh he's oh, one no, of the Muslim. I know. I know he, he, he was so desperate to win an argument, he just threw out, you're a white... I don't you know what you're okay. talking about. All right, God bless. God bless. Take, Take care. care brother. Peace brother, brother, with you. Brother, you. Brother, yeah. Yeah, go on, go on. He's got a testimony, but he's not ready to say I am freezing. I'm, I need to stop. I am stiff to the bone. This is a battleground. It's for soldiers. It's not a place for people who are children in the faith. And I want to challenge the churches again. Where are you? This space evangelizes nearly a quarter of a million people through the videos. Think about that. Churches, why are you not supporting the evangelism going off in this corner? Why aren't you supporting the evangelists going off in this corner? This is a strategically important place for evangelism and the church needs a presence here.